Morning everyone. Welcome to another BR60163 unboxing review. This is the shot you got of this, well, well, of this Locos box in my, in uh, my, my most recent video, which is of 78019 and 90733 on the Worth Valley Railway. Those two Worth Valley Railways have started off, have started off the spring series. Again, the NRM one's finished off the winter one, and again for a start of, of the spring one, as we're just getting it, as we're just into early March now some Worth Valley videos, and this is the first for Spring Series Model Railway video, which is a, an unboxing of, as you can see, a Patriot class. Now, um, I didn't, of course, I didn't show the actual loco. Well, I didn't show it in the box during um, during that video. It just got a shot of, just got a shot of it like this, like a little mini, like, well, um, like a mini trailer, um, saying, um, you know, um, saying coming soon, meaning the review, unboxing review is coming soon, and now here it is. There's something special about this engine because here she is. Again, not only is she an a, a, a unrebuilt Patriot class, which um, I like the best. Again, Buckman do these unrebuilts and Hornby do the rebuilts. Um, again, they both look good, but I but I'd say the unrebuilts look better. They look a bit more vintage. Again, they're, they're very similar to the Royal Scots and the rebuilt ones. They look um well if you minus its smoke deflectors. They look sort of, um, sort of similar, sort of quite Jubilee style, to be honest. Again, again, Hornby do them. Although, um, I think Hornby, um, this particular model, Hornby did do it in, uh, um, but a long time ago, which would have come in the old Hornby Railways box. And, and I'm sure, I'm sure Hornby they did or do they? I'm not sure if they still do do a, a railroad version of of an unrebuilt, but their, but their higher detail ones are the. Are the um re are the rebuilt Patriots? Um, but again, I, I prefer these unrebuilt ones. Well, if I had to choose, but as you can see, she, she's in LMS Crimson livery. And um, what's special about that is that again, I do own LMS locos like a, like the Black Five, the Fowler Two Six Four, and the Ivat Mogul. But they're all in BR Black livery. They still look good. But this is my first ever, first ever LMS livery locomotive. I mean, I haven't even got one in LMS Black. I mean. <laughs> I had to get one in LMS livery because um, even though I, I'm in Leeds, which is well, Leeds is right in the middle of the country of Northern England, so almost like a meeting point for both L for both LMS and LNER, really, sort of like right between the two networks or regions, uh, running regions, so, you know, right between both East and West Coast Main Line. Um, but I was born in Carlisle, which is LMS territory in the northwest, so it's very. LMS, West Coast Main Line. Although L although LNR trains did work their way on the New New Newcastle to Carlisle Carlisle there, um, line as well. Again, my 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 dad can remember those. But I was born in West Coast Main Line L LMS territory. So, I mean, in all the ten years I've been collecting model railways for, um, I cannot believe. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's ten years this year. Of course, I cannot believe I, um, I haven't got one in LMS livery. You know, f you know, for that long. Well, un until now. So she's my first ever actual, you know, um, no, well, um, first ever LMS liveried engine. So I'm finally, I'm glad that I've finally got one now. We're going to get this amazing looking Patriot out. Again, 5541, that's the number, well, the, G, well, the GW1 number of a, I'm sure it is one of a Great Western Prairie tank. I've got a feeling um, her BR number would probably be 45541. And what's this one's name? It says it says it says here. If they just move it so just just so it's in focus. Yeah, um, I got yeah. As you can see there, I got her from the Keith Linworth Valley Railway. From the shop at Howarth again. Yeah, uh, again. You know, I showed her on that on my most recent video. You know, f for a little trailer. Again, and here is the review. Her recommended price was one hundred and three quid. It was one hundred and two, one hundred and three, so fairly pricey. But as you can see, they put it down to eighty three quid, which is which is not bad at all. Um, definitely worth it because she's because she just looks superb. Again, can't, again, I can't wait to get her out because um, she's in LMS Crimson livery. And what is she again? Patriot five five four one Duke of Sutherland. Yep, in LMS Crimson. I'll, I'll have to get hold of the Duchess of Sutherland as well, and I'll have both the Duke and Duchess. <laughs> She's an 8DCC. Um, so yeah, 83 quid, quite a bargain really. But this loco is definitely worth, definitely worth a higher price anyway. But again, I, I'm so glad that I've got her for, for quite a bargain there. 
open up the box. Oh, a fair, a fair few of the, in, of the instructions there. You know the usual, the, the usual collectors club. I've got, a, I've got a fair list of these um, instructions. Oops. Again, parts, lubrications. Oh, again, and despite the layout not being up, um, I'm going to explain what I'm going to do shortly. Because this, I, I just, I so want to see this hardcore running. Seems like, um, I think the, um, the man put that down in the shop. Again, able, you know, on, on some contact details, if there is any problems, well, um, the loco looks okay in herself. Again, here in the block of ice. <laughs> again, that's, again, that's uh, really good. I'll explain what that is in a minute. Because, um... There, um, not with the loco, but with the packaging, I have a little bit of a problem, and uh, yeah, I'll get to that shortly. I mean, um, she just looks, she's looking brilliant. Um, so again, again, I got her out that Sunday night when I got back from the KWVR, and um, all parts are intact. So, but I'm just hoping that she runs okay. But um. We will find out soon. And now, as you can see, this is the, again, this is the first ever locomotive that I've got to come with this. As well as that caution locomotive... Oh, that's just a little bit flying out again. Again, don't worry. Um, caution locomotive and, and tender a link. Please lift both, you know, perfect care from the, packaging, from the packaging tray. The one below it, that one, says do not return locomotive to tray if, if accessories... Well, not all of them, just some of them. Are permanently fitted again I'll explain that in a minute and it, it, it includes this little piece here which is it it goes on the tender I'll show you once we get her out so now well I've actually already fitted a few of the extras on her but um there's still some cab footsteps in there what looks like an, uh, another coupling hole for probably even, maybe even more realistic running you know so the tender and the you know the tenders even closer to the engine um, and some sort of side cab doors. Let's just put those on there to try and keep this off the carpet. It can, it can get, it can get sort of caught on it. But let's get this amazing looking loco open. Let's just try and get the, um, the camera as low as I can get it. Let's just um, move these out of out of shot. <laughs> There's another little bit there, which goes on the tender. It's kind of wedged in there. I'll get that out. And oh yeah, it's here. Okay, that, okay, that's good. The box is leaning to the side there. It's not going to twang back. This um, it sort of goes in the middle of the tender. I'll show you how to do that. Again, some of you may or, may already know, but um, if, you, if, you, if you're thinking of getting a Patriot, I'll show you. Let's just carefully... She's got one of those hook bars from on the... T ah, ah, there we go. There's her tender. Just um, move that to one side there. As we as we now take a look at this absolutely beautiful, incredible looking patriot, Duke of Sutherland. Again, I'll just try and make sure it, it doesn't go too out of focus. But wow. Look at this. This is me. Oh, first ever LMS Loco and I'm seriously, seriously blown away. I mean, as you can see, I fitted on, um, I fitted the front vacuum pipe onto her. Some cylinder drain pipes there. You, you probably just picked that out under there. Yeah, yeah, right there between the wheels and the one. There's one on the other side as well. Um, I fitted the one on the tender as well, which was a little bit wonky, but I, I didn't, I didn't bend it anymore in case it snaps. So we have, we've got a lovely LMS livery on the side there. It's more or less uh, pretty much the same type of livery. Well, um, similar if not the same as the Midland compound locomotive, which part of the style kind, kind, um, kind, uh, kind of reminds me of. So, um, so, so yeah, again, um, the unrebuilt Patriots look very similar. Look very similar to the Royal Scots. Oh, yeah, I, I don't think I read them. Um, I think it says on the backs we've got brief history here. We've got some brief history. And um, it says, yeah, the London Midland and Scottish Railway LMS rebuilt two former London North Western Railway LNWR accident damaged is it, is it Clawton class locomotives at Crew Works in 1930. A, a further 39 locomotives were rebuilt in Crew in, in, 
1932 and 1933. And um, yeah, final 10 locos were, were regarded as brand new construction and were completed in 1934. So made all in the 30s. Says the Patriots were a smaller boat, yeah, um, and practically almost the same loco really, but it says the Patriots were were a smaller boiler version of the Royal Scots. Oh yeah, and it says here, and were often referred by by enthusiasts as baby Scots. Yeah, uh, and this says the Patriots were used for express passenger parcels and freight express, well, uh, express freight services. Sadly, there's no Patriots left, but some of you may already know this. And, and you can find it out. I think it's um, started on, on the Langothlan Railway in Wales. I, f I, I found out, I saw it being said and, and, and advertised on the on the Worth Valley Railway. The LMS Patriot Project, where they're planning and rebuilding, a, well, a replica of a, certain pa of a certain Patriot called the Unknown Warrior. I think that would be fantastic, absolutely brilliant. She's got sprung buffers. Um, the front coupling is already fitted, thank God. I really don't like having to fit them myself. She's got like a little, uh, the camera won't really pick this up, but on the front sort of little hook there, like a folded up chain, sort of chain coupling, which looks quite realistic. Cab detail, just bring it there. It's um, not absolutely superb. There's only, well, the majority of it's a mould really. There's not really that much done. Well, the regulator's done a couple of the gold wheels. Um, so it's not superb, but it, it's, um, there's some there. Again, a double a double hole coupling there again. I've got a feeling that one in the spares, in the spares, in the spares bag. Where is it? Ah, oh, here it is. Probably um, again. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but it definitely looks like some sort of um, coupling which may you may um, which fixes which will fix on there and may make the tender fit even closer. But even um, again, she'll make it round my third radius curves. Obviously not second, but she'll um, she'll she'll just make it round third radius with those with those drain pipes on there and the tender being coupled up to the closest hole yep and that one um, but one clever thing is that you've got like a flap thing here you see it there it's it's very flimsy so be careful but it'll fold up there when you couple in the yeah and um, here's the thing when you couple the tender onto her fold it up like that because the tender has got a uh, has got one there as well well it doesn't move but it's, it's um, a flap edge there uh, and if you couple her on, and then f and then push this back down again, obviously not like that, but it'll rest on the tenders one there. I'll show you shortly. It'll rest on there, and and it looks pretty realistic. Let's just turn her around and get a look at the other side, because there's um yeah th there's a little bit more detail, like like side pipes on this side of her. She is absolutely exquisite, absolutely beautiful. Just. Just look at this engine, absolutely fantastic. It's blown me away, this one. One of the sandpipes was a little bit sorting, yeah, on the middle wheel, a little bit moved, but I managed to very carefully bend that. Just, again, they again they feel fairly strong. I just managed to move it carefully back, back into position. She's absolutely incredible, 5541. Duke of Sutherland again. There's no chance the camera's going to pick that up, but we um, again we know we we all know what it says now. She's absolutely incredible. Just look at her, absolutely fantastic. So again, um, first ever we'll, we'll just have a look. Oh, just um, move that bit of box out of shot. I oh, know you couldn't really see it, but still. So I can maybe put her there so you can still see her. I'm going to have a look at the tender, but uh, but. The, <laughs> Yeah, she's um, she's kind of low on coal. Again, I've got a few locos which are like this. One of them, um, again, that Southern N Class Mogul's got barely any coal in at all, and that, and the Cabri Castle locomotive, is practically empty as well. There, um, there was another Patriot, just Nick Gixon. This was the one that was she. She was stood in the in the glass cabinet and in the Howarth shop. She was stood in there, um, so she was the one on display. There was a, a, another one in BR Green just above her, which called Home Guard, it's quite well known that one. Uh, the man in the shop actually said that he could remember that certain one, Home Guard, running when, uh, when he was young. Maybe some of you out there have that model. I've seen it I've seen it a fair, a fair few times, but I didn't know much about this one. But the Home Guard one is full up. She's got a nice full tender full of coal. Um, but 
you know, against um, since I, well, I have got LMS locos, but not in 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 LMS livery until now. You know, I thought, well, I've got to get this fantastic looking Patriot in LMS crimson livery. I've got to. I've just got to get her because it. You know, I cannot believe that in all the ten years, you know, ten years that I've been collecting model trains, I have not got a locomotive in LMS livery. I'm kind of annoyed with myself. <laughs> Again, well, uh, I suppose getting LMS locos like Black Five especially is good, but not getting one in this in the actual livery, you know, you know, um, and let alone the crimson livery, which is which which is you know, uh, uh, which is the best. I'm kind of annoyed with myself for it. Oh, and uh, one good thing is that these break the um, rods on on the tender and the loco. Uh, again, some of you may all may already know with these with these Patriots, they are already on That's because um. Then um, some of the extras, uh, if you just look on the cab, between the two, between the sealed and open window, you just see a tiny thing sticking out there. You had to put them on. Seriously, you have to. Put, they are tiny, tiny transparent things. You're probably thinking, what? Really? You have to put those on? Yes, you do. First loco I've ever run where, where you have to put those on. You see, there's the other one there. Um, this one on this side was a little bit flimsy, but I turned the loco... I just very carefully with my hand underneath turned her like that and um, even though it felt a little bit loose it didn't seem to want to fall out the one on the other side felt quite securely in so I thought well it might just be okay but it's a good job this because when I was putting her back in the box I, re I saw that it had fallen out yet yeah, it had come off and it had gone on the carpet somewhere if I had spotted that I vacked the room the other night I, 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 and it would have gone wee straight up the vac Weesh, <laughs> right up there um, I had to get a torch, search around the carpet for it. It's only tiny, so I suppose it wouldn't have really mattered, but I but I soon found it. I mean, I was looking here, here, and then the locomotive was sat in the tray, in the in the plastic tray. Um, and it appeared like that close, well, yeah, on this side, that close right next to it. I was so relieved when I found it, seriously. Seriously, I was so, so relieved. And I'm so glad, but that's the first loco that... Um, this is actually the first loco to do a... To do a fair list of things which I've which I've ever owned, but it's not it's not going to stop me up. Uh, you know, it's not going to stop me absolutely loving how she looks. Just get a good look at the front of her there. Five five four one. Um, not only is she the first engine to have those tiny ridiculous um, transparent things, well well window bits to put on. Again, I'm just so glad the vacuum pipe starting. I had enough trouble with. You know, with those, you know, without, you know, without these things starting. Um, the vacuum pipes were fairly easy to get on. But she's also the, f yes, um, same way. Well, I actually glued these in because they were a little bit on the loose side. Last thing I want is them falling off and then getting, and, and, and then getting jammed up in the wheels and the comrades while she's running. Um, but she's also the first engine. All, all my other Buckman Locos, which have this sort of coupling device, they all have to go in the first hole. Yeah, the, the outer one. For them to fit in the box, but this one is different. It's not serious, but 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 yeah, well, you know, not something proper major. But it it has to go in the nearest hole to go in this one. Yeah, if if so, this one, if you try putting it in the in the outer hole, the tender will just you know be up, you know, the cab step the cab steps will be caught on the edge like that. So, um, so she so she won't fit in. Has to go in the nearest hole. I mean, I, I um I discovered that when the man was carefully coupling her up. To put her in the box, he put her in the nearest hole at first, uh, and he and he, um, um, he even he said that the extras for some of these, you know, the such a fuss, they're just absolutely ridiculous to put on. You know, they're, they're always trying to spoil it for you. Oh, and these parts, these to go on the tender. Oh, just get that off the carpet because again, I don't want it getting cut. It's it's very it's very flimsy and flexible, so be careful. And, and this as well, it goes together on the tender. This. Okay, there's there's little holes, but there's two points sticking up there. Let's just try and get carefully get those in, if we can. Uh, find the holes. Is that in? Oh no. One second. We're nearly there. I'll get this in. I'll just hold it in the light. One second. Oh, there we are. See, it goes in like that. And then this bit, again, some of you may already know, 
with the two little points here sticking up going facing forward go around on like this but it it, it doesn't really want to stay on the side this the side points fit on why they could not have just you know put this on already I don't know it's kind of annoyed me to be honest this and goes on like that but you can this you cannot put her back in the box and seal her up with this on and again this is something I am quite annoyed at it's the first time I've ever been annoyed at Bachman's uh, um, block of ice <laughs> plastic tray packaging because this point here which goes over the tender is far too low. It it practically sits right on top of the flat point of the tender, so there's no room for this to go at all. Again, that has again quite good um, quite good detail there, and again I love the livery, but that has annoyed me. It has. Um, what? Well, and I'm not sure if she'll if the front parts will go. I don't. I don't know if they'll go in there with the cab front steps on. I don't know, but I, but I know that the tender will definitely not fit back in with those parts on. And of course, if if she's te if she's temporarily running on a temporary layout again, which some people have out there, and putting it back in the box, you know, it means you it's you know you're going to have to be very careful taking off and putting these parts. Well, of course, you don't have to put them on, but if you wanted to look, very, you know even more realistic as realistic uh, you know as you can it's it's going to involve taking them off put, um, putting them back on again unless i very carefully without make without doing too much damage modify this part of the box i don't know maybe cut maybe try and cut this piece out some some of you may disagree with that but um I know it means the tender will be exposed then, but it, it'll, it'll, well, the top of it will, but it'll be covered up by the plastic, well, the sleeve part anyway, so I could maybe do, so I could maybe do that. I'm just glad that she, that, um, you know, that she fits in with like, <laughs> with like the vacuum pipes on and the cylinder points as well. They're no problem, but this has got me kind of annoyed. But at the same time, it, at the, at the same time, it does not. It does not stop me absolutely loving how beautiful this locomotive looks. She is just incredible. Again, so um, I'm so glad that I've finally got an LMS liveried engine. Again, I'm annoyed with myself for not getting one in, you know, until 10 years after my first collection of, um, well, first, uh, first um, one after 10 years of collecting model railways. What looks it's just a, what looks like a little bit of excess lubricant on the top of her there, so yeah, my only downside really is the thing on the tender. Um, again, so all that's put to you know so what's to put on the tender is those parts and the vacuum pipes as well. I mean, again, the man uh, the man said to me in the shop, you know, at Haworth on the Worth Valley Railway, as he was boxing her, um, just be careful with this because it can easily it's not well. It feels, it doesn't feel like, it, if you turn it upside down, it doesn't fall off. But he says it's very flimsy and it can have a habit sometimes if you just sort of touch it slightly accidentally. Just just has, has a habit of popping off. It keeps this, it keeps, this bit's quite wobbly, but this bit keeps it on. This point here. So, um, I mean, I, I don't think even if you just took this bit off and, 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 and had this frame on, that it'd even fit, it'd even fit back in the box. It that I mean, that, I mean that is just silly in my opinion. Why they could not just have oh, Buckman. I was really really, I was loving your your block of ice packaging even more, more more. But um, so if I was giving the packaging a score out of ten, I would have to mark it down for that. Uh, out of ten, I'd give it I don't know maybe a maybe a uh, well I'd say a six, but no. But no, but no higher than that, because it, it, it's a first again. So not only is she my first LMS liveried engine, she's um, a a you know a few, a few downsides with the packaging has come along as well. Being the first one which will not go back in her, you know. Well, it's not the locos fault. It's the packaging. They should, you know, they should have made it. They should have modified it. So well, well, uh, at least this bit, so it can fit back, so it can fit everything on and back in. I might if you, if you can get hold. Does anyone know if you can get hold get hold of some coal loads? Because I could do with I could do with a few actually. Because um, I'd I'd like to put one in in the um, Southern N class mogul of mine. Again, it, it reminds me again. Um, 
IC82. Um, again, we're sort of both we're sort of both sides of Northern England. But well, um, again, Leeds is really central. Crew is uh, of course the northwest. Um, this again would we'll be a locals like this ho um, um, territory uh, or home. Um, he's recently got his first LNER Livid locomotive, which is um, the beautiful Hornby B1. And um, I've I've now recently got my first LMS Livid locomotive, so sort of like I'm <laughs> almost like swapping sides. Um, uh, and it's a beautiful, absolutely immaculate looking Buckman Patriot. Oh, yeah, I, I just kind of accidentally knocked that off there. But again, it's it's flimsy, and um, if it ever did get broken, I'm sure we, I'm sure we can get hold of maybe uh, another one. So again, of course, to get it back off, to um to get off a bit, really important this bit off first. And then just take hold of this bit and pull carefully out like that. Again, there are again the cameras. Yeah, um, um, you could just see you could just see there tiny holes, right by those two large bits sticking. I'm not really sure what they are, but they but they go in there again. The again these extras. You just again that you know some of them are um so flimsy, so complicated to get on. You you, you just have well, the um look at these tender parts are fairly simple. I'd say the only really really tough um. Um, uh, you know, um, tough bit of getting the extras on the, on the loco itself was those tiny, ridiculous little parts there. Why, Buckman? Why can you, huh? Just uh, annoying me even more. You know, making, um, um, coming out with even more ridiculous little parts again. I've again, I've had enough of brake rods underneath without tiny bits like this starting. But still, I cannot criticise it too much. Because this locomotive is oh it it is an absolute stunner. I mean, it's just incredible, absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, I'm practically feeling as blown away as I did when I first opened City of Truro about a year or yeah oh yeah just uh, just over a year ago. Yeah, yeah it was. Although um, this time, what I'm going to do a bit later on is again since the layout is not up. I'm gonna set up a um I'm gonna set up a a just a small a small oval piece of truck again not the great big one I, I, and I'm gonna get out just an old, one of my old standard train controllers again it's pointless getting the HM2000 out because again it, it takes longer to set up and then just putting it straight away but um afterwards again you've seen me do this before where I just set up a, a straight just a straight piece of track from one end of the room to the other but um I am so desperate to see this locomotive running not just backwards and forwards. Well, you know, not just forwards and immediately backwards, but running around a circuit. So I'm going to set up a small circuit, probably with third radius curves, because again, when I was testing what curves you can stand on with with the tender in the nearest hole in the nearest coupling hole, I tested third radius and she's just okay. Again, even with the cylinder pipe things on, again, cause they're not against then they're not very long. They don't exceed. They don't go over the front wheel. Again, if they go over the front wheel, you would have to have no. Uh, well, practically no set track curves at all, to be honest. Um, probably you, you would then have to, you know, have a running on layouts with like um, very realistic curves made by flexible track. But um, so that's good. You're able to put those on to make a to, um, to make a look more realistic. So um, I should see you shortly. Oh, there. Let's just 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 watching the wheeler. I, I should see you shortly. When I have a small circuit up, oh, um, I, I was going to couple it up to a tender as well. I'll do that now. So again, one way to fold this piece forward so it's flapped up like that. Looks like I'm going to have to just remove it from the camera a second to do this because again, it's um, not not dead easy. In, in fact, I think I'll um, I think I'll swap swap hands with them. Put the loco in this one. So because again, I'm I'm right-handed, so I've got more control. Over the tender, so I can just have the locomotive resting on, resting on the left hand. Is that bit? Is that up? Oh, up oh, nearly. Ah, there we go. Oh, oh, hang on a minute. The the the, the um the tender flat things come down. Just get that back up, and then we'll be able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there we go. Just keep it held upside down. Get that coupling straight. I mean, it's definitely it's good, but it's just ah oh, our oh, oh, first attempt this time. There and there we go. Now to get that down, to get that bit down, I think I might just um, carefully get hold of an extra. Ah, ah, there we go. Just just remove the camera from the tripod without without it shaking too much. 
it's Owen just using some D that was just some DVD boxes just to cuss it again because it's it's only a small tripod just move them to the side just to just to have the camera up a bit higher as you can see there that flap comes down and rests on the tender one and um, it it is just further away enough for that to for that to handle going around third rate well well I'm I, I'm hoping it will because again what made me ang what made me angry about the um about the LMS IVAT Mogul I've got for three oh 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 four seven one of those was a f um, like a flying pig. Is that the roof of the tender? If you couple up to the nearest, you know, because um, she has the same coupling device. If you couple her up to the tent, up you know, up to the closest one to the tender, the tender roof can get caught on the cab roof. Even you know, because she's got like a tender roof thing, obviously for, for better um, better weather protection gets caught even when going around um, fourth radius curves so I'm hoping that um, just something like that when couple up to the nearest to the um, when, uh, when couple up to the closest hole will be okay going around curves um, especially just a little bit tight well third radius isn't really tight but just that little bit tighter should I say but again just look at this fantastic Patriot it's absolutely incredible looking so again, despite me being quite annoyed at the packaging, I am extremely impressed with the locomotive. Um, and just before I go, I'll say I, uh, again. So what? So what I'm going to do shortly is uh, again, you know, set up a small a small circuit of track. It'll probably be from here to here. Again, that's about the size the layout was when I first, you know, when I first ever started collecting. You know, like whenever you know, put the Flying Scotsman's layout up. Um, just that with a small stand, standard tray control. Yes, she won't run as smooth as she would with uh, with the HM two thousand. But the big layout should be up again in about a week or in about a week or two. Um, when I have some free again, I do have quite a bit of free time. But um, again, it will be up again in a in a in about a week or two. Um, but what, uh, what I'm going to say again when I first ever filmed City of Truro on the day I, I got her again about a year and a half back you know, or just over a year I um, you know I filmed uh, it well it wasn't really unboxing I just filmed the stud on top of the box part you know um, like that and then I just put her straight back in and then didn't get her running until I got the big light up again about, about two or three weeks later <laughs> what you know she really blew me away on being so fantastic why I didn't um, test you know um, test her and her like I'm gonna do with Duke of Sutherland now I'll never know <laughs> but um, that's what um, that's what I'm gonna do soon so set up a small circuit again not just one strike bit of track going from one end of the room to the other because I'm so desperate to see her going round a circuit you know going forwards for a, for a long for a long period uh, forwards and then backwards for a long period of time it, it'll save me uh, plus it'll save me more running her in It'll save me a bit of running in on the big layout when I when I get that up, you know, which means I'll soon be able to film her running rolling stock once um, uh, the pulling rolling stock, sh um, should I say, when the big when the big layout is next up. So um, fingers crossed for when I for, uh, for when I do get her for when I do get her running shortly on um, on a test layout. That is LM that is LMS Patriot four six zero. 5541 Duke of Sutherland absolutely incredible model thank you very much for watching